Hey y'all, good afternoon. Hello. Okay, really? Let let's try that again because anyone Okay, you you stole my energy, Nam. Okay, well good afternoon. My name is Tanya and hopefully you're in the right place for building a better stream community. So I am going to go last as the moderator, but if everyone can please introduce themselves, starting with Adam. That's me. I'm Adam Coble. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm Adam Coble. I'm a Twitch broadcaster. You probably know me from my work with tabletop role playing games. Uh, I'm the GM in residence for Roll Twenty. Hang on, I can hear me. What up? Uh, and I am the uh, the GM for uh, Role Play. I'm also the co-creator of a little game called Dungeon World. Awesome. What's going on, guys? I am Frisk, and I am. <laughs> I'm a variety caster, a voice actor, host. I do, I do a little bit of everything. So, I am Imperial Girl Misty. I am a Twitch streamer who sews and plays games, and uh, I am on the Roll Twenty channel as well, doing uh, Star Trek Adventures. And uh, now I'm sitting next to him. It's his turn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hi everybody, I'm Dr. B. I am the clinical director of a mental health nonprofit that works with the gaming community and industry called Take This. Um, oh, good, we've had, yay! <laughs> um, where the, if you've ever seen the AFK rooms at other, you know, a bunch of conventions, we run all of them worldwide, as well as a bunch of other stuff that we do, and I do occasionally stream with a bunch of other therapeutic DMs under the name Clinical Role. Oh boy. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I didn't invent it. I didn't invent it. I am going to come over there. Oh, come cool. hang out. You did not warn me about this man. <laughs> what? I Terrible. feel as if I'm sitting in the wrong place right yeah. now. <laughs> I'm just going to be waving. Gonna be Hello. This is an interesting panel. Um, and I am your moderator. My name is Tanya DePass, also known as Cypher Tier everywhere on the internets. I often cause trouble, variety streaming, driving poorly in, in video games. <laughs> And I'm That's on fair. Rivals Waterdeep, which is a Twitch D&D show, and I'm the GM of the show that Misty is in, um, Modifus's Star Trek Adventures. And I'm gonna take this stream ambassador as well, ha ha. And I managed to go <laughs> backwards on the slides, go me, I'm pro. It's, it's my third panel today, give me some slack. <laughs> All right, <laughs> a little bit of a housekeeping, so hopefully, dag nabbit. <laughs> okay, who's, who's, who has like a thing in the audience? Because this is not working on its own. Um, these are not time slides. I don't know why it's doing this. Um, so you know, here's the description. Feel, please feel free to live tweet. Um, throw out the tag, better streaming along with TwitchCon 2018 or TwitchCon. And for those of you that have seen me at panels, when you, we get to Q&A, you better have a question. I will ask you to go find one if you start to give me like your life story, your character creation, et cetera. She will destroy your ass. <laughs> I Seriously, will. Seriously, you are in danger if you try to fuck with this woman. You have been quoted for this, by the way, in every panel I've been in so far. What? This part. Everyone, it's Tanya says, question, <laughs> questions end with a question mark. That's right. It's true. I've, I am very happy to say I have made people walk out of panels because I would not let them have their say in their moment in the sun. I am proud of that fact. <laughs> All right, so we all have very different approaches to community in some ways. In some ways, we all you know, believe in the power of it. So I wanted to hear briefly from everyone on these three points, like A, why is community important? Um, how has having a community impacted you as a broadcaster or streamer, whichever you prefer? And then um, after that, let's talk about the less than sa savory side of, of communities and how they've not always been welcoming. So who wants to go first? Wow, don't all talk at but, once. Oh, oh, boy. oh, you look at the guy who's like the least experienced streamer <laughs> on here. Okay, fine. Okay, oh, Misty, you... I'm putting you on the spot. You don't t me? Yes, you. I don't talk for a living anymore. Right. You, you know what? But you, you know have what? a very welcoming Okay, you know, community. let's no, no, let's talk no, from no, a mental no, health no. perspective, okay. all right? Uh oh, no. Hold no. on. Now everybody talks at once. <laughs> Hold on. Well, one, we do have a translator, so actually don't talk over each other. 
Um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Missy to go because your welcoming community is why I came and stayed in your community. Me? Because you're cheerful, oh. but you're very real, and that makes a big difference oh. to me than the oh my god I'm so happy to see you and the super fake cheerfulness that some people do. Because you know, and I've also got the chance to get to know you, so that's been a bonus of it. But your community is one that really drew me in. You know, I'm very lucky. I I don't I don't know how I did it. <laughs> it's just a bunch of awesome people who hang out in my channel and I am able to, I don't know, be there with them. Um, why define community in relation to streaming? Why is it important to you? I think to me, if I didn't want a community, I would go to another platform, right? Like live streaming is the life, to me, the lifeblood of Twitch. I love interacting with chat they're a part of the stream it's not just me and then there's some chat on the side right it's it's a part of who i am as, as a broadcast streamer i guess we're supposed as a, who i am as a streamer uh and i wouldn't be where i am without that strong really positive awesome community and i think you kind of reap what you sow yeah i i completely agree with that 110 percent um, for me, community is very important. I absolutely adore my community, and I don't know where I'd be without them. And I feel like uh, as a caster, you, you cultivate this wonderful group of people, and it's not, it's not just, you know, just random people just showing up. It's, you just, you kind of attract what you put out. And if you attract, if you, like, if you put out these good vibes, you're gonna get all these amazing good vibes. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get these people who enjoy you know, the games that you play or the content that you create and they genuinely enjoy what you do with you and you enjoy it with them. So it's kind of like, a, you know, back and forth. Um, did I answer all those questions? Hello? Yes, we're, we're coming back to the less than welcoming <laughs> community um, yeah. in a bit. But Adam, because your, your community is very self-regulated, self-taught, and mm -hmm. it's pretty much when someone comes in if they're new, they don't feel new very long. Community is not a tangible object mm -hmm. in the way that like a truck or an orange is. Community is a intersection of, of priorities, right? It's right. a bunch of people who agree to behave according to certain precepts and that agreement binds them together. That agreement that we are going to do certain things or not do certain things and be or not be a certain way mm -hmm. in this space creates community. I think that people get this idea in their head that community is just a thing that you get from being around something enough, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in chat all the time. I'm part of the community. But I've never believed that to be the case. I don't think that you can accidentally be a part of a community. Community is intentional. It's about accountability. Mm -hmm. And it's about interrelation. It's about knowing the people that you are a part of a community of. It's intentional in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that anybody who says that they don't do work to build their community or reinforce it or manage it in any way, who's just like, I just have such a great community, but I don't do anything about that. They don't really have a community. They have an audience. They have fans, mm -hmm. which can be part of a community, but I think that the deeper thing is creating something on purpose, building a, a structure and creating a space for people to interact in a guided way. Mm -hmm. And then having them opt into that. Because you'll often find yourself, and I'm, I'm certainly in this position a lot, where I will just have to say to people like, I don't think you're a good fit for this community. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, what do you mean? I'm entitled to be here. And I'm like, no, you're really not. Like, you're, you're choosing to behave in a way that doesn't fit with the culture that we've built. It doesn't mean you get to just hang out. Like, there's the door. You can go. Or you can change, right? And that's, that's part of how it works. It's like structuring that space so yeah. that people know whether or not they, they, they have to opt in. They just have to be consent to participate in the community. Exactly. And we'll definitely talk about that in a bit. Yeah. Um, Dr. B, from the mental health perspective, what is the importance of community that you've seen in terms of streaming? Well, uh, I'll, I'll, well, I'll, I'll speak more from the perspective of the people I work with because uh, you know a lot of the teenagers and the young adults that are your audience are my clients. And so at Take This, our slogan is, it's dangerous to go alone for a reason. Adam speaks to the idea that just being there doesn't make community, feeling included does. Mm -hmm. Feeling a connection does. And feeling a connection is also protective. Isolation is literally symptomatic of certain mental health conditions. And by feeling a certain inclusion, acceptance, people are more likely to reach out when they need help, get the help that they need, and keep on coming back. And so that's what community does from a mental health perspective. 
And for me, it's, it's building a group of people that want to be together, that feel welcome to stay and hang out. And like Adam says, like not everyone gets the right mm -hmm. to be there. Being in a community is work. Mm -hmm. It is. Like that's the, that's the thing people don't realize is you don't just get to be a part of a community by doing nothing and being around, right? And we see this reflected in structures where community is supposed to be implicit, right? Like your workplace or your family. And people think, well, I can just do whatever I want because family is a community I just get to belong to. It's the same with streaming. Like that fallacy of, well, I watch your stream all the time. I just get to be a part of this and you should excuse whatever bad behavior that I have. It isn't the case, right? It's about choosing to do that work for other people. It's what you owe them uh, to build this thing together. And that goes for broadcasters and for people participating mm -hmm. in the Exactly, and I know we have another question on, on here, but I think it dovetails into our next slide kind of well, actually. Talking about the kinds of communities, and we can talk about how being in a less than welcoming or encountering that can, can affect us. And apologies for the typesetting, I had to grab my slides again right before the panel. Um, so let's talk about communities that we've been part, part of, because I found like kind of these four striations of, you know, they're positive, everyone's good, they're happy, but it's like no politics, no whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like we're always cheerful, we're always chipper, and this is the stuff we don't talk about. And then positive, but certain topics are off the table, maybe whatever's going on in the world that day, we're in stream, we don't want to discuss this right here now. Um, neutral, like nothing in here but whatever I'm doing on stream, like no politics, don't stand with whatever's going on in the real world. And then the streams where it's like just wild fucking west out there. Sorry if I'm <laughs> not supposed to cuss, oh well. Oh well. Um, <laughs> But you know, how, what kind of communities, A, do you think you have and you've built, but then when you've encountered those negative communities, how has that affected you? Do you want me to read it again, Misty? I mean, you, you, gotta, you gotta pick people or I will just answer all of your questions. <laughs> so I'm leaving room to not hear Adam uh, talk. So I would say the second one would be mine, yes, right? The I positive, agree. but certain topics are off the table. Uh, things that are automatically divisive and there's no positive outcome in them to discuss, even with a, an adult group of people, I have no desire to get down that road, right? I hear it all day. I don't wanna do it on stream. Um, serious topics that come up in the course of normal conversation, let's talk about it, right? Let's be adults, let's have a good conversation, let's try to, as I said, my, <laughs> I used this phrase like all morning, move the ball forward, right? Like if we can have a discussion as adults, absolutely let's do it, right? Respectful, remembering that there are humans behind every username and that they all have opinions. That being said, you know, we have to respect humans in our discussion if, if like, whether certain uh, people are people, off the table, right? Those aren't discussions that you have because that's not a thing. But to be able to um, bring a positive light to a community of people who you've built and help them to have serious discussions is important to me. Uh, Frisco, what about you? Uh, with me, uh, I, I'm just gonna kind of echo off of what she said because I, I agree. You. You, I, me personally, like with my community, I will talk about just about anything. I mean, usually we leave like politics and all the other stuff off the table because people who are very, very, very into that stuff, mm -hmm. um, it can it can get pretty ruthless. And then you can you, you'll immediately just see a mob in chat, and you're just like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> so uh, usually I stay away from that stuff. But I, I think it's very important to talk about topics that are you know that are currently trending, you know, because everyone has Twitter, everybody knows what everyone's talking about, whether it be a change on the platform or something that is affecting us all in some way, shape, or form. So I think it's important because, you know, like Adam was saying, you know, when you're, you're building a community, you're building it together, but you also have to remember you're cultivating uh, these friendships and you are, you're building, you're kind of like growing together. And, you know, you grow together by having sagacious conversations, you know, like s stuff that is important. It's, it's not, you, if you want to blindfold everyone and just keep it all like rainbows and kittens, you know, that's cool, whatever, if that's your thing. But I think it's very important to also be real mm -hmm. because let's be honest, it isn't all rainbows and kittens and, mm -hmm. you know, lucky charms, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Adam, I'm interested in your POV on the next slide, and then Dr. B, I will definitely get to you. Um, because identify issues when you're creating community, because a lot of people don't realize it when they're doing it, I think. They, they're not being intentional. They just, again, they start streaming, they start a Discord, 
And it's like, oh, look, community has grown up around me like a weed. That is not actually what you've managed to do. You're just like a bunch of people who like to watch you. Like you said, it's an audience versus a community that is kind of right. formed. Yeah, I mean, I think community built on reaction uh, is sort of unintentional. Uh, you are being forced to respond to external pressure to decide how your community functions rather than setting a stake in the ground and saying, this is how we're going to be. And according to these, these precepts, this is how we react to things as they come and go. So for me, before I even started broadcasting, uh, I, I have a, I'm an educational background in, in um, like social theory and politics. And I knew that I wanted to build my community on a kind of like anarcho-syndicalist sort of protocol where there is no, my mods aren't cops. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a downward authority. I don't get to just decide how the community operates because I'm the streamer. I'm really just a figurehead, like the queen. Uh, and the community runs itself based on those protocols so that when something comes up, when a topic comes up, the people in the community can discuss how are we going to engage with this as a group. And de facto, that means that the community has to be smaller. What I consider to be my audience is a, a larger object than what I would consider to be the greater sort of community around which my, my broadcasts operate. And that's just a necessity, right? Because once you get to a certain point, like I don't think that the kinds of protocols that I use to, to manage my community would work for someone like Lyric or Co, right? If you have a, a group of people at that size, you have to, by default, change the structures to, mm -hmm. to fit it. You have to run it more like a, basically like a dictatorship. I mean, you can, that's, cer that's certainly an approach. Or restructuring it and giving mods more power. There's a lot of different ways to, mm -hmm. to organize people. Oh, but yeah, it's, it's different in making that choice and acknowledging early on where I was like, I don't think that I can, in good will, like, manage a, a group of people over a certain size. That was a choice I made early on. Where I was like, I just, this just won't happen. Um, and so doing that, again, it's a, it's a product of intentionality, of deciding the protocols that you want to be present in the space that you're in. You get to make that decision. Nothing is a given. Um, and so, Dr. B, your thoughts on kind of cultivating a community that Misty, I have a question for you. Well, and Adam touches on a lot of what I talk with people on, and that has to do with clarity of intent, clarity of role, and clarity of standards. Uh, you know, when I've spoken with a lot of streamers who get in, you know, hot water because they want to do all the things, and they, they want to do all the things for, you know, amazing reasons. They want to help the community, but they haven't really defined what helping is. Is it education? Is it outreach? What is it? They want to have an open community without defining it by the standards that Adam has. When you have a clearly defined set of standards, you are going to be able to curate the type of people that come into your community a lot more than if you just freeform it. And one of the biggest differences that I've seen is from streamers who treat streaming as just sort of something that they're a part of versus streamers who treat it as a job. And streamers who realize you are the content creators in every sense of the word. You are a publisher. What comes from you is on you versus being reactive. And that's what I think I'm hearing from just about everybody up here in a certain respect. I mean, Adam, even though you're, you say I'm creating an anarcho-syndicalist, I, I so am resisting the urge to go Monty Python on you. <laughs> I really am. Um, Listen, if you don't want to see the violence inherent in the system, that's on you. <laughs> I didn't vote for you. <laughs> um, but, but even that, you have an intentionality behind it and an idea that it really do it doesn't work over a certain size. Yeah. And you accept that and you go with it. And that is a huge difference in streamers who curate their communities and build their communities versus streamers whose communities are anarchy with a small a. Right. Mm. And when you curate your community, your, your community will do some of that work as well. Like I've had that conversation that Adam describes where you might just not be someone who is who's gonna feel comfortable here and we don't necessarily feel comfortable with you here uh, where I don't even have to have that conversation. People who are not even mods are like, this might not be the place for you. Right, and that's, that's, that's the education aspect of it, right? That's empowering every member of the community to be responsible mm -hmm. for the community as a whole, yeah. right? This idea of, and we have this conversation in my community a lot around the phrase, we don't do that here. We don't talk like that here. We don't use that word here. Because the response to that is, well, I just use that word. And they're like, well, okay, we've come to an impasse. So either you stop 
mm -hmm. using that, that word or doing this behavior, and you can become part of this community, or you continue to use that word somewhere else that's not here. That is your right to do so. But if you choose to continue to behave this way, you are at a direct opposition to what we hold dear. And that's a choice and a, an enforcement that everyone can participate in, mm -hmm. right? It isn't about Ahmad noticing it and then co coming to me and saying, Adam, I need you to come into this chat and talk to this person. Everyone in the community is empowered to okay. say, hey, so you're new, maybe you don't know this, we don't use that language here and we can have that conversation. Yeah. Well, one of the, oh, so I just had a random thought and it's. Um, Make it a quick random it thought. Is, it is, a, it, <laughs> but that in and of itself, what Adam just said, it's one of these paradoxical things. Like I, I hear people who are like, oh, you're gonna treat me like a baby. But in reality, you are treating people as adults by saying, if you would like to be here and it is your choice, we ask that you conform to these certain standards. And if not, you have the choice to go someplace else. Mm -hmm. It is not babying people. And that's a resistance that I, I, I've talked to streamers like, I don't want to do that because I'm treating people like babies. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. No. No. You definitely have to set the tone with, uh, with that stuff. Something that I, I realize and I notice, especially with people who are just starting up and starting to cultivate these wonderful communities, is a lot of them will actually hold on to some of that toxicity. Like they will have one person in the chat that doesn't make anyone feel welcome. Mm -hmm. They're very uh, passive aggressive. You know, you can name any type of negative connotation on the bat there, whatever. But um, the fact of the matter is, if you keep that toxicity around, and you allow that to be there, then all it's going to do is going to grow and it's going to spread. And the people that are quality human beings that come into your chat that could contribute to your, to your community in a very meaningful way, they're gonna go because they're gonna be like, oh, who's this jabroni in chat? I don't wanna be here, you know? <laughs> like, and, and that's the reality of it. And you cannot be afraid to set that standard because if you just let that go, then you're just, you, it's almost like you just don't care. You're just like, oh, well, this is the way my channel's going. We're just gonna be toxic city now. All right. The the, in, the insidious danger in that situation is when said jabroni uh, is a tier <laughs> a tier three subscriber mm -hmm. who donates $1,000 every month. Oh boy. Not right. all money yeah. is good money, Adam. This idea of, right, but but it's, it's easy to say when you have a larger base of, of other supporters, mm -hmm. but if you have one or two people who mm -hmm. represent a big chunk of your fiscal existence on Twitch, sure. the choice then becomes, do I take the hit and say, you know what, thanks for your hundreds of dollars, but please fly off into space, mm -hmm. or I mean, do you tolerate that person and let them pay to continue being a douchebag? Right. Hold or, that thought, or, we actually have a slide coming up. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, but, oh wait, can I see something real quick? Fresk. Oh, come on. Fine. It's really quick. Okay. And we never left no, slide no, six. No, my third. So anyway. <laughs> we all live here now. Welcome to slide six. No, this is where we live now. now. Okay. Right, do it. So option three is you can always try and talk to them like the human being they are. That's what I was gonna. I was gonna. You know, That's ain't fair. that anchor on there? You know, you can talk to them and be like, hey, buddy, old pal. I don't know. Um, I'm picking up what you're putting down, but I, I don't I don't like it, and uh, some of the stuff needs to change. And uh, if they don't want to change, then oh well. But you know, sometimes you know they're they're like, oh okay, I understand. I'll definitely correct that. That's good. Let, allow them allow them space to grow. Yeah. True. Um, so we've gone on a little bit, but I do want to. I just basically want to say that I do feel we're responsible for the communities that we cultivate. Do, does, there, does anyone disagree on that before we move on? Well, any, any broad uh, why did I know it, would you? We're responsible for ours? Any broadcaster who pretends that they're not responsible for their community has their head up their ass. Yeah, I, Fair. Like I, anyone, I wouldn't, I wouldn't anyone, state it that way, but I'm in complete Anyone agreement. who's, if they, if they provide them with an emote that gets used in a, a, a phobic context, if they cultivate a community of people who are jerks and then just let them loose on the internet, they are responsible. They are responsible for that because they have let that behavior happen. They have enabled it in some cases. And I, I absolutely think that they need to take responsibility for it. You mm -hmm. can't control what people do on the internet, but if you give them tools to be jerks and then they're jerks and you're like, oopsies, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, so we, we talked about this a little bit actually, but does anyone else have thoughts on like kind of the attrition of the community? Because um, one thing that happened with me and my Discord was someone who fell in that same kind of, they were, they were monetarily supporting me, but not at a tier of like, oh, if I make them mad, they don't give me money, I'll be broke and on the street. But it was still kind of this, I give you money every month on, on the Twitch, therefore I can do and say what I want. And I'm like, no, you can't do this in my Discord or in my chat. How do you deal with that? Because I didn't know, because I wasn't doing a good job checking with my folks, 
that this person made a lot of people uncomfortable because of things they'd say, things they'd do, things that they still do on Twitter, but I've got them muted and I never have to see them again. Um, how do you deal with that? Because I went up basically having to, I tried to talk to them and I got the, but so-and-so did it, like it, like mm -hmm. they used, oh, a, the context is they so. use a slur and they're white. They, they thought that they could use the N-word. No one should ever wake me up. What the fuck? Uh, hold on. It's not like this. Okay, so I will give you the story quickly because as a moderate, like hold on, hold on. I, okay, I'll give you the story. <laughs> I like how, I like how Dr. B is all like, let me get my drink. <laughs> okay, so I'm going gonna, gonna to untie the bow tie for this one. <laughs> you didn't Sir. tell me I needed a beer for this panel. <laughs> I don't know. We still got 40 minutes. I'm going to go true. get us a beer. Uh. Um, so the, the, st the context of the story is um, we do have a politics channel in my Discord. And Desa Samaro, we're talking about politics or something else. And, you know, two black dudes, they sling around the N-word, you know, as, as some of us do. And I posted this clip from Twitter. And it's like, oh, I thought this was relevant. And I went to sleep because most of my folks are European. I wake up to all these pings from my phone about, have you seen this bullshit? <laughs> And this person, of all the things they could have quoted from this clip, decided the N-word was the thing they were going to do. Mm. No one ever wants to see me woken up by a Twitter DM at 6 in the morning, ever, for something like this, because I don't have kids. I had to go into mom mode and go, what is your problem? And their answer was, well, they said it. And so I that's when you... Back on. <laughs> I, I felt misty from over here. Mm. Um, but, you know, these are the kind of things where... To them, they saw nothing wrong with it. They were parroting something else, but they forgot the context of you're white and European and you don't understand the baggage of this word. And there's a whole lot of black folks in this discord and I'm the head bitch. <laughs> and I'm the one who had to wake up and see this. So true, yeah. I am. I mean, my Not email wrong. is HBIC. <laughs> so uh, how do you deal with that? Because this was then causing an issue which I wasn't aware of. And you know, like talk about the value of checking in because it made me realize I wasn't doing a good job of that and going, hey, is everything okay? Is there someone that's not you know, working in this community? I think I broke everyone with that story. Um, I'm just Misty, still in shock. do you have anything uh, so to say? I, I have had more than one member that when banned, I have had a waterfall of, oh my gosh, thank you. That person was making me so uncomfortable. So those are great openings for, hey, just as a, you know, let's check in now that this happened and please let me know, or Ahmad know, or anyone in our community, if you are uncomfortable, because I don't want you to be uncomfortable. That's not the goal here, right? It's not the goal, I, I, not the goal in my community, right? I don't want you to be uncomfortable, except if it's like an uncomfortable discussion that we all move forward from, things like that. But if someone is like creeping on you, if someone is using inappropriate language, please, I mean, that's something that if you have a strong community or if you're building a strong community, there should be pathways to address those things. And if it's a secret and if you're not sharing it, then nothing can ever get better. So I had to ban a sub who was making everyone uncomfortable. And it's hard to ban someone who is financially supporting you when, because this is a job. Um, but at the same time, you have to weigh it between um, what is their, like, this, are they, are, how much, how many issues are they causing versus will a conversation, like Frisk described, will that actually help? Is this someone who has the capacity for growth? If they don't, your time is valuable. Don't do it. So once again, it's almost like you're the manager and you have to check in with your employees. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 it solves so many problems just to really start thinking. If you don't, think about what you do as a business. Mm -hmm. You are the manager. You are the CEO. Check in with your employees. Right. Let, if they don't feel comfortable talking to you, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Right. It's yeah. okay for Twitch to be both awesomely fun to do but some also jobs are job. fun right exactly and if you treating twitch as a job and looking at it like a business plan and you have people who like do work for you even if you're unfortunately not able to pay them and like looking at the whole picture of your stream can only help you 
And looking at it like a business will only help you. I think yeah. it's I think it's wise to look at the act of broadcasting as a business mm -hmm. because it is for you. But there is some serious danger in acting or thinking that you are the CEO of your community. Oh yeah, no. Not because like this <laughs> idea of your mods performing unpaid labor and you being the boss that checks in with them on seeing if they filed their TPS reports, <laughs> <laughs> like this this corporatization of of the structure is really dangerous. You don't want that because I I fundamentally believe that. Business Business structure is anathema to community, right? To culture. Yeah. So getting everybody on board in the flattest possible hierarchy mm -hmm. you can manage, I think is a much safer way to engender positivity in a community than to be like, all right, the boss is here. Everybody, you're having an all hands meeting. How's your department, <laughs> right? And that's like, it can be, there's a lot of pressure, especially as you say, if you're not paying someone, you can expect nothing Correct. from them. Correct, right. And that's why it's it's having a business plan for you as the broadcaster. Yes. But yeah, this you're, they're not, they're not in, no one's an employee, right? No, like it's no. a, it really, they are friends helping you out. Yeah, right? and then um, honestly, you know, if you are very community driven, you know, these people in your community, they become like friends, they become like fr like family, and you know, they, they are your regulars, you see them all the time. And one of the things that I, I've, I've done personally, it might not work for you, um, but I, I always, I always know who's in my chat for the most part. And I recognize people and I know, I, you, you get, you know, it's like, oh, this guy, he comes in middle stream all the time. I see him all the time or this person shows up all the time or this one person always shows up on Saturdays. Or you know, like you just kind of mentally make these little notes. And there was one time where I had, um, there was someone who was a, a, a very, like very regular in my chat and they just disappeared. They completely fell off the face of the earth. And me, I, I make friends with my community members and, and they're, they're more than just community to me. So I naturally was concerned. So I reached out to them and I was like, hey, I was like, I haven't seen you in a little bit, but I just was reaching out to, you know, uh, just to make sure that you're okay, you know? Because sometimes people, people kind of need that. And, and the person was like, yeah, I'm doing great, but, and then there it was, the but, the so-and-so person in my community was messaging them and being very forward and inappropriate and creating a not so very safe space for them. And they were always in chat and it was making them uncomfortable to the point where they felt like they couldn't be there anymore. And sometimes I, I understand that you, you might not have the courage to actually come up and go, hey, there's an issue with someone in the community. And then it turns out this person was harassing other people as well. And then I was like, hey, I heard about this and you're gone. And then it was just boot. And then I just let them know. But sometimes you kind of have to like take the temperature yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. if you know, if your community is is controlled enough for for you to do that, or you know, you pay that much attention. Mm -hmm. So. And yeah. there's a level where the community almost wants to protect you as the broadcaster. Like, oh, yeah. I don't want to let them know. I don't want to put this burden on them. I don't want them to think. Mm -hmm. And please do. <laughs> if anyone's yeah. ever harassing you. Like that's a member just because they have a sub badge that gives them yeah, zero right that, to do that. They they don't have as much power as as you think they do. Nope. They they really don't. <laughs> um, that actually goes into our, our last slide before we'll be ready for Q and A of everyone's own best practices. So um, please ignore the Alex best practices again. I had to grab the slides mm -hmm. off Google Drive right before the panel started. So we love Alex. They they just could not join us for the panel. Um, so I would actually like to hear from Misty to start about your best practices, which you said are community, not viewers, fans, and then leading by example. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, Misty. leading by example, if you, if I want to attract assholes, I'm going to act like an asshole, right? If I want to, I'm going to be me. I, and I don't necessarily only want to attract people who are just like me, because please don't ever be just like me. But the, because um, we, we should all be who we are, as long as that's not a total and complete jerk. But the, if I say, here, here's the type of community I would like. So I am going to be welcoming, because that's who I am. I'm going to be friendly and kind, because that's who I am. And I'm going to take no shit, because that's who I am. And those expectations, like that's me. Someone comes in. I treat them how I would want to be treated. And I notice as the community grows and we foster that, that's how the community as a whole acts when people come in. 
the self-correction is, I, 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 at this point, don't even, I, I could have the keyboard, because I'm a creative streamer, I don't have the keyboard in front of me about 70% of my stream. So I can't just jump in and like take care of something. I never have to reach for my keyboard because the community uh, is so, they, they know they what I themselves. expect and they regulate themselves. Yeah. And what about you, Dr. B? Well, I mean, it's echoing a lot of, in a lot of respects what everybody's saying, and that's setting expectations, regardless of what those expectations are. And being really overt about it. I mean, we, I, I hear people joke about Wheaton's Law all the time of don't be a dick, but what, is exact, what exactly does that mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, such, that is such a variable concept from person to person. And so, you know, for me personally, when I, I'm managing projects, people, et cetera, et cetera, I'm really overt about things stay away from all isms and I really spell it out and all of that but having those clarity of expectations also lets you know what you're not willing to do and this is in some ways I think what a lot of folks are saying up here as well that this is what we can do this is what we can't do and this is what I'm willing to offer you to help guide you along this path and having just really clear really just boundaries, boundaries. It, I sound like a shrink because I am. Boundaries, <laughs> boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. All right, well, um, honestly, I, everyone's like, every, everything up there is just like, oh, so set an example. And I'm just like, humor, play with your food. Can, <laughs> so please, please so, define. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna define that. Um, so I feel like a lot of the time when you get these disturbed people in your chat or on the internet somewhere, anywhere, and they, they're, they're just unpleasant at, at first interaction. Honestly, I see it as a cry for help because mm -hmm. some of these people, they, don't, they might not get the attention that they need at home. Maybe they're, you know, they're younger or maybe they're older and they, maybe they just don't get attention. They don't really know how to interact with people. They've never been in a place that is a bit more you know, secure, some place that is friendly. And you know, their first interaction is to just you know, show up in a chat and they're just like, uh, you, you look like you like dicks. You know, and, and I'm just like, well, yes, and, I do. Thank you for no, right. no, 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 but, the, but, that, but that's the thing. You're very so observant. No, so here's no, what I'm talking about. Either. So here's here's what I what I'm going with. So I will I will use I will use my humor to get them to change mm -hmm. because you know sometimes you just have to give people a chance, yeah. and that is what I like to do. So when they come in, they're just like, hey, streamer, you like dicks, and I'm just like. Are you talking about Dick Sporting Goods? I go there all the time for hardcore yoga lounging pants. How did you know? You know? And, and then people in my chat, they're just like, ah, oh, mega lol. You know? And it's hilarious because, you know, at first some people are just like, oh, no, not another troll. And then you immediately change the conversation. Mm -hmm. You change the tone. And then that troll is just like, you know what? You're funny. I like you. I am suddenly a changed man. <laughs> you know, like, like obviously they don't all they don't all respond like that. But, but um, do. but then yeah, but yeah. but some do. You know, and after I respond with humor, I I'll be like, you know what? I think you were overall disrespectful, and you're gonna get ten minutes of time out, Mister. And I want you to think about what you've done. And when your ten minutes are up. I want a better response. I want a better attitude out of you. And then after 10 minutes, they're just like, all right, you know what, you're right, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And you know, and if you give them a chance to redeem themselves, some people will redeem themselves. Yeah. And that is, how, that is how I usually run it. Now, obviously, we can't do that with everything because you know, you'll obviously get the people who just come in and they're just like, N-word, 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 upside down, smiley face. And it's just like, oh. There's no, not a redeemable. No, there's, yeah. there's, no redeem, there's no redemption for that. No. But there is a level of redemption for some things. And it's case by case. And you just mm -hmm. kind of have to feel it out. Yeah, I, want, I totally want to steal what Mira does. I was on a panel with, with her yesterday. She has an emote and it's like a wild cock has appeared in chat. And it's an actual rooster. Don't don't get ridiculous. No one ban Mira, please. Um, but it's like, but that's a signal for the chat to go. Oh, I see what today's what today's flavor is, and then they just kind of run with it. Adam knows. I'm pretty much like, no, just no. We're not doing this. I've got I've eased up, and actually, I I thank you and Misty because your moderation style. I've actually shifted how I do that. I've not become like gone goodbye. <laughs> Adam, what are your tips? 
I mean, I can't, I can't be asked managing the community while I'm streaming. I got shit to do, like play video <laughs> games and look cute. So <laughs> you're so I, cute. I, oh I, I want, I want a community that that manages itself. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of this stuff for me isn't about my own personal action, right? It isn't about me interacting directly with the various shit heels of the internet. It's about equipping my community with tools and backing to know that the way that they deal with the shit heels. I'm there for them. Like, I support that. Yeah. I've given them protocols and, and parameters to say, this is how things are around here. And if they start to feel like they're not this way, you have the ability to, uh, some of you more than others, to, to adjust this. And my mods are not uh, an outpouring of my innate godlike authority at the top of the pyramid. They're just the people in the community that I trust most to follow that vision. They've bought in the hardest, right? Yeah. So for me, asking someone to be a mod isn't like ascending a pleb to some, some high tier of power. It's asking for work, right? Like when I ask somebody to be a mod, I'm like, this is a big burden. And in exchange, you'll probably just get hassle. But you care about this community. I see it. I see you every day being a good person and following the protocols. And you understand. You know mm -hmm. what I want. You know what the other mods want. You are a better. You're making this place better because of your presence. Can I give you this, this Twitch icon, which will probably make a bunch of people hate you, but <laughs> I want to empower you to be someone for them to look up to, That's right? True. My mods are people that I want to have my community look at them and say, I should be behaving like that. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I don't choose mods that all agree. The mods disagree on a bunch of stuff oh, yeah. and they don't all like each other and we're not all friends, but they represent different parts of the community that I have built that I respect and appreciate. Mm -hmm. And so for me, a lot of the time, the work that I do is with them, not with the community at large, but I'll sit down and say, okay, so how are you feeling about this particular thing that happened in the community? I see that you have some varying opinions about this, so let's talk, but I'm not there to be like, you're wrong, you two are right, end of conversation. Right. So it's, it's tough because I think that as, as someone who is, I think that you can be for a community, but not of it necessarily. So there are spaces in the community that are open to people talking about their personal problems or reaching out for support or engaging with each other as, as equals. And as somebody who created this community, I can't participate in that. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm having a bad day, I can't go into the Math Squad Discord, go into the Real Talk channel and be like, you know, everything sucks because I cannot interact with the community in the same way they interact with each other. And so acknowledging that and knowing, again, the, the boundaries of the space, not only your own boundaries, but the boundaries of the space and not violating this thing that you've created, right? You make the terrarium, you can't then go in and throw the rocks around. You have to let it live. Um, yeah. And I think that's, that's hard. It's hard to step back from that sometimes when you see others benefiting from, from your emotional labor not to participate. Mm -hmm. But I think you have to look at a community as being something that's not for you, it doesn't serve you, it's for itself, mm -hmm. and you were there to create it and to guide it along, but it's not there for you to like get a payout from. I feel like you should have moderated this, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because then I don't have to, I'm not allowed to have opinions, so you yes, should sure. ask Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, Tanya, no opinion. No, no. opinions with Tanya. No opinions. No. I find <laughs> that most mods kind of self-identify as well. Like, I know who my next mod is always going to be, because there's someone who's already a mod, they just don't have a sword. Mm -hmm because they're already acting um, as a community member, like as an idea, like you are d like, it, it might not be what I completely agree with, but you're doing what's best for this group of people. And it helps me also see different perspectives of my own community. That's, that's a fascinating position to be in, right? Where something happens and you have a personal opinion about mm -hmm. it, but your mods all agree that you're wrong. Right, <laughs> um, right and then you're like, well, I, no, I like mean, you can't, there's nothing you can say right, about that, like, right? Because okay. they, like, they're managing the community mm -hmm. and you can be wrong. Like, if I were to drastically change the way that I act or my personality were to shift demonstrably, I would be the one that would be removed from the community, right? The community would not crumble without me. They would be like, cool, thanks for starting this, but you don't really fit in here anymore. <laughs> so go away. Wow. Right? And that's, that's absolutely their right. The community doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. I don't own them. I can't right. turn them off. Uh, and I think recognizing that has yeah. been humbling, but important. Yeah. I think the thing I, I, I despise, and I mean, sometimes it's a, a, something you have to say, but I hate saying my community, even though in contexts like this, I use it. I use a lot of we words, because it's we. This is like a group of people. I'm just in it. I'm just the face on, like, it just happens to come from my basement, right? I am just a member 
of this community. I think this is the thing that's true about broadcasting in general is that people tend to think of the, the streamer at the top and then the mods and then everyone else in that hierarchy, but really it's flipped the mm -hmm. other way around in that the streamer serves the community yeah. and the mods serve the community and the right. streamer serves the mods. And it has to be that way. It's like a reverse Maslow's. Well, yeah. but at the same time, I mean, we, we, I heard people earlier saying that, but the moderator, excuse me, the streamer also sets the limits. So as you've all been talking, this tells you the extent of my geekery. I'm just thinking about Star Wars. It's like, does do, does the force move through us or do we control the force? <laughs> yes. <Nerd>. Yeah. <laughs> I always think about Star Wars, so we're good. Oh. All right, this is not Star Wars 101. <laughs> Yes. Because it will turn it, Misty. <laughs> there is no community in Star Wars you should be trying to emulate. They're all bad. Don't do it. <laughs> all of them. You don't want to be Darth Vader, and you don't want to be Yoda either. They all suck. Don't do that. I'm safe on this side of the podium because I'm not between Misty and Adam right now. Yeah. Frisk, I suggest you move. No, I, no, I respect his opinion regardless of disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so before we get too far, I want to talk about my own, and then we'll open up to Q&A. So if you do have a question, you can feel free to start lining up and have a question. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. don't tell me I just scared everyone yeah, from look, getting you scared the hell <laughs> out of yeah. me. I'm a little scared of having a question. <laughs> um, but mine is, is moderation, and, and like I said, after my lesson learned about checking in, I try to do that more often. I check in with my, my mods, because they have a channel in our Discord just for them. And, you know, are you still happy being a mod? Is this something you want to do? Because like Adam said, it is work, mm -hmm. and I'm not in a position to pay my mods. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So... That's something I like to do, but also just kind of check in and go, hey, is everyone okay? Like, if, if people are posting a lot in the venting channel, like, do you need anything? Is there anything we can do for you? Because the, the time that I'm on camera is not the only time that this community exists. Mm -hmm. Like, things that go on, decisions I make, things I want to do, you know, I reach out to the community first, because if I just start making decisions and then going, well, no one can tell me no, because I'm the streamer. That's not a community. That's not actually involving it's a, it's people. It's a cult, I think, is the... And see, some people joke about having a cult, and we both know the same person, Misty. The, the, the chat is, talk, is joking about Adam having a cult. Yeah, they said you'd be a very good cult leader. I'm going to take that as a compliment. I believe they meant it as one. Can I just start calling you the father? Twitch.tv oh, slash Adam Goble. Pay me. There you go. Um, but yeah, that, that was just my thought. So check in and moderate. So look, I even have a cute cat gif. I love, I love the, I love that the cute cat gif is there to offset the like. Here are the strict <laughs> rules about asking questions. <laughs> don't, don't expose me like that, Adam. <laughs> Jesus. It's QA time. But we love tact. You. Pusheen says, "Don't fuck around." <laughs> Someone now your questions. That. Someone please tweet that. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna start on this side and then alternate, and we've got about uh, 15 minutes. So please go ahead. All right. Hello. Um, I'm Papaya Chemist. Uh, I'm a relatively small streamer, um, so I was wondering. Uh, I don't. So I don't. I don't actually have any mods in my channel, and I was wondering if you could say a little more about how to choose your first mod. Well, first, stop calling yourself a small streamer. Oh, okay. thank you. <laughs> um, one or actually, I'm going to pick on Misty. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, that's fair. <laughs> so, tips on choosing your first uh, mod. My first mod was someone who was in my channel a lot, and I said, "Hey." You want to be my mod? Yeah, same. Right? I mean, because really, and, and this, this might be the wrong way to state this, but beggars can't be choosers, right? Like, I had three people in my chat. It's like, uh, you. Right, you just right? Throw, you throw a knife in the room, and you're like, whoever survives is right, a mod. Exactly. <laughs> one mod, right, three viewers enter, one mod leaves. That's so the, right. It, really, when you start, that's it, right? And then there's, uh, I moved on to a phase where I had an application, and I got far too many people. And it's interesting too, because when I did things like that, anyone who wasn't picked left. And I was like, but why though? You were about to donate, like to give me hours of your time and me saying no, and, you know, thank you, but no, turn them up. You pick the mods, you're the broadcaster, you figure out who is gonna work best for you. As your community grows, look for the people who are helping foster a community that is the one that you, I, like your ideal. Mm -hmm. right. no. But at first, yeah, just pick someone. <laughs> Hi. I don't, oh, there we go. Um, I have a very specific question and don't want to take up time, so I'm wondering if I can ask Dr. B's time after the panel yes. for just a moment. Thank you. I'm around. Bam. Uh, I 
saw you had Discord up there on one yes. of the slides, but you guys kind of went past it. Yeah, because we got in the weeds. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so I'm a part of a Discord community because you guys are talking a lot about like streamer communities type things. They're the um, same for me. Yeah. My, my Discord well, and my Twitch community are the same. All my Discord yeah. mods are my Twitch mods. Yeah. Yeah. It's same. so much same. easier to see it as one thing. Okay, yeah. I'm, but I'm talking more of not a streamer mm. Discord. I'm talking mm -hmm. of like the one I'm in has two founders and it's not about them. It's about like, well, and you guys are saying it's not about you guys either, but like it's, we're trying to fund and trying to help each other stream, because it's streamers, right? We're trying to help each other grow. Yeah. And so a lot of what you said goes to that, but I'm wondering like what you think of like, you know, the hierarchy and things like that as a Discord community like that. And is it the same route as, you know, the streamer? Um, I don't think do it's the same route. No, do you mind if I take it, or do you have thoughts, Misty? I don't think it's the same route. I think if you're if you're if you're a streamer uh, creating a community right around your channel, that's that's a that's one animal, right? But if you're a group of streamers trying to go towards a common goal, it's a, it's kind of a completely different animal. I mean, mm -hmm. mo monotheism and polytheism aren't that different, like. <laughs> You have a bunch of gods or you have one. It's about the authority structure, right? It's like who has the power and where does that power lie? That's way more important than like who started the Discord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I my like Adam, my Discord structure, everyone who's a Twitch mod is also a Discord mod. Yeah. Yeah. Because that community, everything I expect while on mm -hmm. while I'm broadcasting is what I also expect in the Discord, but to a higher level because you can have conversations that can go on and people can come in and out. Right, and since yours isn't channel-based, it becomes a little bit different, like who do you choose? That's, I mean, I don't know, maybe make it democratic. Well, and we're trying to, to make it so that you know you don't just see the founder and be like, oh, I'm, I wanna cater to them and wanna go to them and I'm gonna get. Well, in, in that case, you definitely wanna talk to them about creating just a, getting rid of the founder title entirely and just creating an admin title and that, that way too. yeah so just just <laughs> so then the easiest way to do that is just get rid of the whole founder panel because you guys don't really focus on the founders thing right. and then just focus on admins people who are upholding the values of the community and the discord and these are the people who really enforce it that's yep. that would okay. definitely be the best course of action it, it's tricky that that authority that inherent authority will never go away right like yeah. The, the, I mean, the queen may not write the laws, but if she came to my house and was like, stop doing that, I'd be like, sorry, mom. Like, <laughs> I, there, there's still that, the, the person's name is still there, and unless they're pretending to be someone else, like, the, that'll never go away. You can change the color of the name, you can put them along with everybody else, but people will pay more attention to them if they are known as the, the founder of the space. Yep. Well, yeah, and you, you said it. the same thing where it's like they want to be well, a actually, part of the community. Well, um, actually, we're getting really specific, so if you want to okay. hang out after the panel, sure. because there's yeah. a few more yeah. people Let's, on each side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. Hi, I'm Hi, Asia. you came. Hello. <laughs> I did. Oh, you know. <laughs> I'm Asia and my Asia. My question is, um, do you have any suggestions for tools you can use to build communities, not just like on, like when you're streaming, but like outside of streaming? Twitter. Twitter. Uh, any type of social media is going to be your best friend. So if you don't have an Instagram, make one of those. If you don't have Twitter, please make one of those immediately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and make sure your Twitter is not just go live tweets. Yeah. Right. Be yeah. like, sh show people who you are. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a character streamer, who you want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let your, let your personality and let yourself shine through all forms of those platforms. Anyone else? You're good. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. So I help uh, mentor a lot of I don't want to say small streamers, but new streamers, people that are trying to grow the community. Mm -hmm. And I'm struggling with one right now, and it's, he's just very blasé, very lack of concern, lack of just, eh, it'll be what it is if, uh, joke about uh, anatomy is. Is this guy a young white man? Uh, Youngish. <laughs> All yes. right, just But checking. also, what is your question? How do I, what do I direct, kind of, how do I help that person, or is there anything, do you have any guidance on, how do I get him to see that those things are not things that you want in the community? You can't. You, mm. you, you, can't. you can't. You can't. Because how do we make a person give a shit about somebody else's feelings? <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's yeah, kind exactly. Of, I mean, it's, it's impossible yeah. to make someone care about something that they don't care about. Yeah. Where, we, where you might see, hey, if you want to cultivate a community, you know, you should definitely do this. And, you know, and I, and, and, you know we understand that. Yeah. But it all comes down to what type of community you want to run and how, like, what you envision everything to be. Mm -hmm. So if this person is going, 
mm, I don't care, you know, then they're going to have in a community that it's just right. doesn't care, right. you know, and, and, and that's the unfortunate, yeah. you know, reality of it. So as right. much as you might want to help this person, they have to be able, they have to be willing to help themselves yeah. first. And I think that was, sorry, that's my question. Should I just continue to help them? Well, I would, maybe what I might do, because I don't, I don't give up super easily, even when I should, the, perhaps something like, hey, what do you want out of this? Do you want a good community? What do you want? And if you want it, you need to figure out how you want to get there because what you're doing right now might not be it. Let, have them look at the end game and make a path there, right? And if they can't, what they're doing isn't going to get them there, it can, it, maybe it'll stimulate some thought process that maybe I should change what I'm doing. There's also an entire branch of psychology dedicated to why people change. And um, while everybody up here is absolutely correct that if there's zero motivation, you can't make people do what they, but it's very rare that we encounter someone who truly has zero motivation. And so this branch of psychology uh, uses techniques that are packaged together called motivational interviewing, capital M, capital I. Mm -hmm. There's some great workbooks for uh, practicing some of these skills, which are basically not arguing, using empathy, using reflective statements, and amplifying their own change language and pointing out their change language, not yours. You don't, you don't argue and make cases for it, you just amplify what's already there in them. And there's some really useful workbooks that I think can benefit just about anybody in any, pen, in any profession. Thank, Thank you. you. Cool. Yes. Hi, I'm a newer streamer. I go by Astro Monkey TV. I want to say thank you very much for this panel. Um, I feel as if there's some conflicting things going on here. Uh, we've heard both that we shouldn't have uh, staff meetings, and then we heard, uh, this is from Adam, that uh, he does go to his staff and has meetings, right, uh, to kind of get the sense of the community. Um, and on the one hand, we want to build a community that's not us, but we also do have that ultimate responsibility. All right, I'm going to ask you for your question. Yes. How do you balance having that responsibility, say, on social media for your community and not really owning it, not being um, in control of it? You have all the responsibility, but not all the control. Yes, yeah, sucks, doesn't it? Yep. Yes. <laughs> like, you're responsible for the, how they act, but you can't make them act a specific way. Yeah, I mean, you're recognizing a true thing. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Um, you have to realize that what you do has a consequence, the way in which you act has a consequence. People may emulate or respond to that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if someone goes out and does something, like if I get harassed online or something, and someone decides to go out and white knight for me or go yell at this person, I can't control them, and I usually will find out after the fact. The sad thing is, you, as a person who's putting yourself out here, you, especially if you, ha if you have an audience, and people gravitate toward that, they, they like what you do, they may feel a way about you protective, or you know they're part of your community, and they don't want you to be hurt or whatever, and then they respond in a, in a way. One, you couldn't stop them from doing it, because you'll find out after they've done it. And you can tell people, hey, you know, I can fight my own battles, do whatever. But at the end of the day, you just have to accept that people are going to do what they're going to do. And you can address it in the community when it happens. But realize that, you know, best intention aside, you have zero control over other humans. When we, when we talk about responsibility, it's less about, like, just because someone is a part of my community and then happens to be a jerk somewhere else doesn't mean that I'm responsible for their behavior. It's about the tools that I give them. Like, in that instance, I was talking particularly about, like, Streamers can create emotes, which change the language of the people that have access to them. And if you find out that your emote is being used in a way that is uh, offensive to your sensibilities, get rid of it, right? Take that away, right? Mm -hmm. That's a responsibility you do have some control over. It's obviously not just because someone ascribes to your community, you are then their shepherd, right? You don't have to control everything that they do. Uh, it's just about having a, an eye towards the way that your behavior affects others and how that spreads out into the internet at large. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Derek. Hi, buddy. Uh, uh, I think several of you have talked about how you have communities that are very healthy. They self-regulate. They self-monitor. However the power structure is set up, they maintain themselves. But I'm very curious about when you're first building the community and you're first identifying what your priorities are and your precepts and your rules are, I imagine there's many different ways to communicate that back to the community and get feedback. And I would like to hear the different approaches that you have all taken on that. Did you have a stream where you talked through it? Uh. Do you post a list of rules that you expect everyone to read you know, under the video? What are the different ways that you build those rules and then educate the community before it is healthy enough to maintain itself? 
leading by example. If yes. you see something that you don't want, you go, oh, we don't do that here. Right. <laughs> um, so that, that's, that's the best that mm -hmm. I, can, I can essentially I, give you. Yeah, I, like, I framed my community stuff around something I knew they would all be familiar with. Right? Like, my community comes from Dungeons & Dragons, and so I was like, yo, this community is chaotic good. Here's what that means. And here are the things that we care about. And I structured it in a way that I was like, it was an I statement. It was like, these are the things that I value. This is my alignment. And I am going to try to cultivate a community that I agree with, because I want to be part of it. And as people uh, accumulated around that, that was just part of the process. They were like, oh, this is the stuff Adam is going to do and the way he is going to behave. And we will interpret the, the alignment ourselves, but this is the general ethos of the space. It's a lot easier, I think, to give people some freedom to be themselves within that kind of parameter, rather than being like, here are the 26 things you cannot do. <laughs> and if you do any of these, it also makes more space for your moderators to act. Because if you say, here are the 25 rules, someone is like, I did a bad thing, but it's not on the list. <laughs> ha! Because then the mods have no tools. Their, their hands are tied. They're like, technically, mm -hmm. you didn't do anything wrong. So if you create a, an ethos instead, if you say these are, these are the, the drives of the space, mm -hmm. then people can engage in conversation mm -hmm. about that. And yeah. be sure, like, Joe, but just to, to clarify, it sounds like you're, you say that you express that ethos uh, reactively to situations that arise to guide the community, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, community, these are the ethos things and then expecting them to follow that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just about setting a, a stake in the ground, saying like, this is what I value, this is what I care about. And when I started, I was a community of one, and people that have joined that community, and as the community get bigger, they are people who agree with that. And we've adjusted and talked about what those things mean, because it's not a strict set of rules. It's like, what does it mean to be uh, positive in this way? What, is this, what does this mean to the community at large? And I don't just get to decide that. And when you start from, the, from a small, like a, a, a newer place, you, as Adam said, community of one, right? When you get two and you lead by example, both of you know, right? Mm -hmm. And then more people come. When you start at the beginning knowing exactly who you wanna be or who you are or what your stream and community wants to be, it will grow that way. And then the self-corrections and the sometimes, you know, personal growth, you change direction in certain ways. As long as it's, you foster it from the start, then it will grow that way most of the time, right, with care and fee. And that's where the work part comes in, right? Sure. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And unfortunately, that is time, but we will hang around for a little bit after this panel. Yep. Thank you all so much for coming out. I love you guys. Please, Thanks, everybody. We'll be around and, you know, give feedback. Thank you. Yeah, I'm done with panels. <laughs> well, hi again. Let me, let me I know. This guy is it was, the one uh, that I had. Quite experienced. Oh, uh, it's a streamer. <laughs>